lesson number one categories of computers and computer languages you carry different types of bags to different places depending on your requirements for example when you go to school you carry a school bag in which you keep your books notebooks and other necessary items but when you go for a sports activity you carry sports equipment in a sports bag Likewise, you have the options to select computers that suit your needs. These computers are designed and categorized with respect to their size, speed, storage capacity, and cost. Here's an important fact. Lady Ada Lovelace, a mathematician, is regarded as the first computer programmer, and she was the daughter of the famous English poet Lord Byron. Types of computers. Now let's discuss the different types of computers. Microcomputers. These computers are small in size and they cost less. These computers are usually designed for personal use and therefore they are also called personal computers or in short PCs. Examples, Commodore 64 and IBM PC. They're mainly used in homes, schools, offices, shops, banks, etc. Following are the various microcomputers that are given different names according to their usage. Desktop computers. See, these computers are designed to fit comfortably on the top of desks. Desktop computers normally come with several units, such as a monitor, CPU, keyboard, and mouse, which are connected to each other and work like a single unit. Laptop computers. Now, these computers are small in size and can easily be placed on the lap. These are battery operated and portable, which means these can be carried from one place to another quite easily. We can perform all the tasks on it as we do it on desktop. But then here's the catch. Laptops are more expensive than desktop computers. These computers are mostly used by people who travel a lot. We can fold down the screen of laptop on the keyboard when we aren't using them. Laptops usually have 13 to 15 inch screen. Tablet computers. These computers are smaller and lighter than laptop computers, but bigger than smartphones. Now in place of keyboard and mouse, tablets use touch sensitive screens for typing and navigation. Tablets are usually found having seven inch, eight inch or 10 inch screen. Tablets can be used for reading eBooks, watching movies, viewing photos, browsing internet, etc. Palm top computers. Well, a palm top computer is a small device that can fit in the palm of your hand. Though the device is small, it has all the features of a computer. It has a small screen and compressed keyboard. Some of these computers use a digital pen instead of a keyboard or a mouse as the input device. Handheld devices. These devices are small in size and can be easily held in the hand. And that's the reason they're called handheld devices. They can easily be carried in the pocket as well. Smartphones and tablet computers are some of the examples of handheld devices. The handle computers are also called personal digital assistants or in short PDAs. These devices either have a touch screen as the input output interface or a simple display unit with a keyboard. Just like a desktop computer, these devices can easily perform any task. Smartphone. 
A smartphone is a handheld device that combines the features of a personal computer with other common features of a mobile phone. It can be used for making and receiving calls, text messaging, emailing, web browsing, capturing and watching videos, gaming and much more. Game Console A game console is a device used to play interactive video games. This device comes along with a display screen, game controls such as joystick and buttons, and speakers. Well, it can be connected to a television or a computer, and in that case, the user interacts with game through a handheld controller. Examples of game console includes Microsoft Xbox, Sony PlayStation, Nintendo GameCube, and Nintendo Y. Embedded Systems An embedded system is one that is a computer hardware with software embedded or implanted into a large device. It has almost all important computer components like CPU, RAM, ROM, input and output medium, but does not have disk drive, keyboard or screen. It's basically designed to perform a specific task. For example, TV sets, vehicles, telephones, digital cameras, washing machines, microwaves, printers, dishwashers. These devices are controlled by embedded systems. Embedded systems are also called microcontrollers. Let's try and understand the working of embedded computers with the help of an example. In a microwave oven, the embedded system takes instructions from the user through the keypad and then translates them into commands. Now these commands are then passed on to the microwave to obtain the desired output. Now let's suppose we wish to cook noodles in a microwave. So what are we going to do? We'll put the ingredients in a bowl and place that bowl on the glass tray, set the timing for it, and then press the start button. You see the microwave will automatically stop as per the timing set for cooking the noodles. But all this is handled by the embedded computer of the microwave. Now let's talk about many computers. See, these computers are bigger in size than the microcomputers and um, they're almost the same size as that of a refrigerator. Well, they have a higher processing speed, but are costlier than microcomputers. Well, many computers can support about four to 200 users simultaneously. Well, you may ask where are they used? Well, they're used in banks, universities, and other big organizations. Well, some examples of many computers are PDP-8, HP 2100 and Microvax 3100. Now let's talk about mainframe computers. You see, these computers are very powerful. Well, they're usually big in size with a large memory and high speed. They're designed to handle huge amount of data. What's particularly interesting is that Mainframe computers can be used simultaneously by more than 100 users. These computers are used in networked environment. Mainframe computers are very, very expensive. And that's precisely why they are used for bulk data processing in large business organizations, universities, banks, scientific laboratories, airline and railway ticket reservation stock exchange markets, etc. IBM Z-Series, PDB-10, 
and System Z10 are some of the examples of mainframe computers. Let's talk about supercomputers. You see, they are the most powerful computers with a huge processing speed. So where are they used then? They are used for weather forecasting, space research, satellite control, etc. C-Ray 1, C-Ray 2, our own Indian supercomputer Param, Tianhe 2, Sunway, Taihu Light, etc. Sunway Taihu Light is the world's fastest supercomputer. It is developed by China's National Research Center of Parallel Computer Engineering and Technology.